everybody welcome to my youtube channel dr sinvas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinvas concepts this is dr sinvas neurophysician from rajmandri andhra pradesh india i am also the medical author of the book focused neurology my email is sriklpm@gmail.com today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating topic the large mid size and small size pupil the large mid size and small pupil so we are going to discuss the causes of large pupil mid size pupil and small pupil first we shall discuss the large pupil we all know that the size of the pupil is determined by two pathways one the parasympathetic fibers which run on the third nerve which causes constriction of the pupil second is the sympathetic pathways which causes the dilatation of the pupil so pupillary size is controlled by two pathways one the parasympathetic causing constriction of the pupil second the sympathetic causes causing the dilatation of the pupil so it's a delicate balance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic which controls and determines the size of the pupil so now let's talk about the large pupil the conditions which cause the large pupil the two conditions most commonly causing a unilaterally large pupil are third nerve palsy and adis pupil the two conditions most commonly causing a unilaterally large pupil are one third nerve palsy second is the adis pupil because the pupillary parasympathetics occupy a position on the periphery of the nerve as it exits the brain stem compressive lesions such as the aneurysm generally affect the pupil prominently so parasympathetic fibers run superficially on the third nerve so any any extrinsic compression of the third nerve like aneurysm or uncle herniation will affect the pupillary parasympathetic fibers first and therefore pupil cannot be constricted pupil will be dilated there is an intrinsic lesion of the third nerve like dilatic third nerve palsy will cause all the manifestations of the third nerve except the pupillary manifestations because the pupillary parasympathetic fibers are superficially spared and they are spared that's why dilatic third nerve palsy is sometimes called as a pupillary sparing third nerve palsy so because the pupillary parasympathetics occupy a position on the periphery of the nerve as it exits the brain stem compressive lesions such as aneurysms generally affect the pupil prominently whereas ischemic lesions tend to affect the interior of the nerve and spare the pupil as in dilatic third nerve palsy because the periphery of the nerve has a better vascular supply hutchinson pupil what is hutchinson's pupil the third nerve compression because of uncle herniation causing dilatation of the pupil a person may has have sustained head injury so he might have developed hematoma so in this hematoma it starts expanding there is an uncle herniation which causes the compression of the parasympathetic fibers on the third nerve and therefore pupil on that side cannot constrict it will start dilating so ipsilateral dilatation of the pupil following compression due to uncle herniation we call that as a hutchinson pupil so when we say a hutchinson's pupil in a person who has sustained head injury that means his mid brain structures are already getting compressed and we need to call a neurosurgeon take a ct scan and immediately evacuate the hematoma person becomes all right so hutchinson pupil is a warning sign of impending compression of the third nerve by the uncle herniation and disastrous consequences of the brain stem compression so hutchinson pupil is a third nerve compression because of uncle herniation causing dilatation of the pupil continuing with the large pupil so we have seen the parasympathetic fibers of the third nerve getting compressed because of the uncle herniation or pecomanism the other cause is adis pupil the other cause of large pupil is adis pupil but what is adis pupil the patient presenting with adis pupil that is tonic pupil is typically a young woman who suddenly notes a unilaterally enlarged pupil the pupillary reaction to light may appear absent all the prolonged illumination may provoke a slow constriction once constricted the tonic pupil redirects very slowly when illumination is removed 
So, what is the pathology of the Addis pupil? The pathology in Addis pupil lies in the ciliary ganglion or short ciliary nerves or both. The parasympathetic denervation eventually leads to denervation supersensitivity and the pupil may constrict to small dilute solutions of pilocarpine that are too dilute to affect a normal eye. Because there is parasympathetic denervation, they become super sensitive and pilocarpine in very dilute solution which normally has got no effect on the normal pupil will affect the Addis pupil. Addis syndrome it is the association of the pupil abnormality with depressed or absent deep tendon reflexes particularly in the lower extremities. Another cause of large pupil is tectal pupils where there could be even light near dissociation. So the term tectal pupil refers to the large pupil with light near dissociation sometimes seen when the lesions affect the upper midbrain. So light means pupillary light reaction, near means accommodation reflex. So light near dissociation means accommodation reflex is present, light reflex is absent. This can happen in a midbrain lesion in a pretectal nucleus wherein the light reflex pathway goes to the pretectal nucleus but accommodation reflex pathway does not go to the pretectal nucleus, goes to the edinger westphal nucleus. So when there is a lesion in pretectal nucleus, the light reaction gets affected but accommodation reflex is spared. So this is known as light near dissociation. Light reflex being absent but near that is the accommodation reflex being present. So the term tectal pupils refers to the large pupils with light near dissociation sometimes seen when the lesions affect the upper midbrain. And midbrain is the center for all vertical eye movements especially up gaze because the fibers cross over and then descend up gaze fibers whereas down gaze fibers descend straight away. Pons is responsible for all horizontal eye movements. So, when the midbrain is affected, some pupils may accompany the impaired up gaze and convergence retraction nystagmus of perinot syndrome, that is a pineal gland tumor. So, if it goes and affects the upper part of the midbrain, the up gaze fibers cross, whereas down gaze fibers descend straight away down, and therefore it impinges on the up gaze fibers, and therefore they can have impaired up gaze. Since it is a supranuclear palsy of the third nerve nucleus, there will be simultaneously both medial recti will contract, so there will be convergence and simultaneously superior rectus and inferior rectus will contract, there will be retraction. So this is known as convergent retraction nystagmus. Then the divergence is not affected, the divergence is normal because the divergence is because of the sixth nerve which is in the pons and it is intact, it is only the midbrain problem. Therefore, the convergence medial recti gets affected and superior rectus and inferior rectus separated by the third nerve gets affected. So, when midbrain gets affected, since it is a supranuclear lesion, both the medial recti fire together, both superior recti and inferior recti fire together. So, there is convergence and retraction nystagmus. The divergence is normal because the divergence is abduction is, by, is done by the sixth nerve lateral rectus and it is in the pons which is normal. Yeah, so far we have been discussing the causes of the large size pupil. Now we will see the causes for mid size pupil. This particularly happens in cavernous sinus lesions. When the ocular sympathetics are involved along with the third nerve, the pupil may be in the mid position because the sympathetic denervation prevents the pupil from dilating fully. This occurs most often in cavernous sinus lesion where there is compression of both the third nerve and pericarotid sympathetics leaving the pupil mid-size. In the beginning of the lecture, I said that the pupillary constriction is because of the parasympathetic supply and pupillary dilatation is because of the sympathetic supply. And therefore, in cavernous sinus, where the parasympathetic fibers run in the third nerve in the cavernous sinus and there is sympathetic plexus running on the internal carotid artery, both can get affected in a cavernous sinus lesion, both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Since the parasympathetic is affected, pupil cannot constrict, it will be in a dilated position. Since sympathetic is affected, pupil cannot dilate it, so again it will be in a constricted position. Since both are affected, parasympathetic and sympathetic, neither the pupil dilates nor the pupil constricts, it is in the mid, mid size. So, very fascinating concepts. 
we get mid-sized pupil in cavernous sinus lesion because both the pair are sympathetic which causes constriction of the pupil and sympathetic which causes dilatation of the pupil are affected. Therefore, pupil is in the mid-size. Now, we will talk about disorders of the small pupil. What are the causes of small pupil? Important neurologic conditions causing abnormally small pupil include Horner's syndrome and neurosyphilis that is Argyll Robertson's pupil. Sympathetic is responsible for dilatation of the pupil and therefore if sympathetic gets affected, example Horner's syndrome, pupil cannot dilate, pupil will be small. Likewise, Argyll Roberts, Robertson's pupil, the lesion being in the pretectal nucleus, example neurosyphilis, again here the pupil gets affected, accommodation reflex is present but light reflex is absent. So, Argyll Robertson pupil neurosyphilis. Argyll Robertson's pupils are small pupils and have light near dissociation. They react poorly or not at all to light but very well to near. Argyll Robertson pupil are the classic eye findings of neurosyphilis. The lesion lies in the pretectal area in rostral midbrain. So, light reflex goes to the pretectal area so it gets affected but accommodation reflex path does not go to the pretectal area. So, it is spare. So, there is light near dissociation. Light reflex is affected. Near accommodation reflex is otherwise known as near reflex, but near reflex is spared. So, this is known as light near dissociation. So, another cause of the small pupil is Argyll Robertson pupil seen in neurosyphilis along with Horner syndrome. So, these are all the fascinating concepts of large pupil, mid sized pupil and small pupil. The mid-sized pupil occurs in, typically in cavernous sinus lesions where both sympathetic and parasympathetic pathways get affected. The third nerve is in the cavernous sinus, the internal carotid artery is in the cavernous sinus. So, parasympathetic fibers of the third nerve in the cavernous sinus gets affected. The pericarotid sympathetics in the cavernous sinus gets affected. Since both parasympathetic and sympathetic get affected, the pupil is in mid position in cavernous sinus syndrome. Large size pupil, we have already discussed, it, it, it could be because of B common neurism or the uncle herniation. Small size pupil, again we have discussed, it could be seen in neurosyphilis, it could be seen in honor syndrome. So, these are all the fascinating concepts of the size, different causes causing different sizes of pupil, large size, mid size and small size. The other important neurology concepts I put in a book, Focus Neurology, it is in a question and answer format written by me, S. Srinivas. It is available online from leading all leading booksellers including Amazon. If interested, this could be bought online. If you have enjoyed listening to my video, kindly share the video with your friends. Please like, share the link with your friends. But please subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinvas Medical Concepts and my IB page, Dr. Sinvas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.